go blasters of what will soon be the former ruins of the United States of America. My name is Brain Smasher and I'm feeling ornery today. So if you're willing to put up with a lot of my caveats and uh, things I have to say as a precursor to my year end list and to keep you crybabies from crying about me not doing a year end list, I will subject you to a miserable attempt at a year-end list because you guys wanted it. I've watched a lot of year-end lists and I feel confident that um, I spent so much of my time paying attention to the former years, years of the past, um, because for some reason we keep on making heavy metal records. I don't know. Um, like there aren't already a million good ones out there. Um, I kind of like this channel to be a reflection of years past, decades past, an exploration of the past. That's what I do as a collector mostly, um, while kind of keeping a finger on the pulse of some new stuff. So I don't feel like my opinion is vetted enough to give you an educated enough year-end list that would be more valuable than the myriad of other year-end lists that are already out there. Um, so, there are a few things that I felt like were underappreciated or underlooked uh, on year-end lists. Uh, there are a few things that I wanted to mention that I discovered this year, but came out last year. I did not do a year-end list last year. Um, and then I picked out some goodies from this year, which I'm sure will be not at all a shock to any of you um, because they are on so many other year-end lists, but whatever. Gonna do it anyways. Um, what we're listening to, this fucking rules. First band since I got it in. Um, this is a band out of uh, Singapore called Orator. And this is called Kapalgnosis. Kapalgnosis. I really dig that kind of faint artwork there. I'm trying to get my glare game on. I don't I hope I'm not fucking that up. I need to, uh, I just don't care a whole lot, but um, yeah. So I discovered this a couple of years ago when I was looking at the Maryland Death Fest roster, which I care a little bit about, but I check it every once in a while just to make sure. But these guys were like way down at the bottom. For some reason, I wound up checking it out, <clears throat> and it has remained in, in steady rotation ever since then. It's pummeling, unrelenting, super fun, riffy, and just cleanly produced, nice and succinct. Um, it's just, it's just got a lot of fucking might beef to it. I really like it. Um, it's nothing original or anything, but it's just like one of those things when I feel like I want something to kind of energize me and kind of be angry for me because I'm frustrated or something like one time I remember I was in an airport just kind of fucking dealing with everything and shuffling around getting all my shit in order and I just put on this record because I just kind of wanted to be like motivated stick with it get kind of frustrated but not like lashing out about it whatever um so upon seeing a couple of year end lists I have some reflections one that stuck out at me a couple of times was this Ultimus record um, and like I, I swear maybe I had checked it out something wicked marches in um, and so I checked it out again just to make sure I didn't miss something or whatever and man um, the music on it is pretty cool I I've, I've always felt like Flo Monnier's drumming is kind of too much or like trying to fit a square peg in a round hole or something I just like overhauled in a way he's just trying a little bit too hard and I just like man go fuck yourself um, but I can hang with it I can hang with his playing on this record and Runa's guitar playing on it is awesome I haven't really cared for any of the last whatever mayhem records um, in fact, I just sold my copy of Wolf's Lair Abyss on LP. Um, I don't know. I, I just kind of could take him or leave him. Um, 
I don't really have a lot of thoughts, but on this record, he does some really forward-thinking, interesting playing. Now, David Vincent's vocals fucking ruin all enjoyability on that thing. Jesus fucking Christ, shut up. Not only shut up, but he's in the mix right here, and all the music is like right back here. Uh, David, I don't think we can get your vocals any louder in the mix. Make them louder. Um, I have instructions from the label not to turn your vocals up any louder. Make them louder, I don't care. Pretty sure it's going to ruin the record, David. We're going to leave the levels right where they're at. I want to ruin the record. I must be louder. Fuck that record. God damn it. It's so frustrating that it's like good music, but just completely fucking ruined by David Vincent fucking wiping his balls left and right all over that shit. Fuck that guy. Jesus Christ. Anyways, Nader Sedek is where it's at. This is Flo Monnier and Rune Erickson with Steve Tucker from Orbit Angel. Not ruining the album. This is fun. Oh, I didn't think I was going to get that pissed off. Um, a couple of things from Your Endless 2 that were, I think, missing, underlooked, um, and I don't have copies of, for various reasons. First one is Endevald with Undershugger Holiday. It's Look, now, so there's this new... Everybody's talking about how there's, like, a bunch of old-school death metal bands playing, like, old-school. And, okay, I get it. But is anyone paying attention to how e there's a fucking million black metal bands that sound like fucking ants crawling across guitars right now? Holy shit. Cool it, guys. We got a lot of cool black metal. Just, just take it easy. Um, but this is... I think kind of lumped in with a lot of that stuff, but it's amazing. I saw one year-end list. His name is Not Skog. I think he's from the UK. He had it at his number one, and I was like, yes! But I think I didn't see it on anybody else's year-end list, um, but it's amazing. It's so mournful and gloomy and just ghostly. Um, from what I've seen, the band consists of nine members. I would have thought it was a solo project. Um, listening to it but it has not been released on cd yet so um and it's one of those things i think that's like cassette and lp and they're sold out mm. so when it's shit like that i i don't fucking care reissue it in two years and i'll pick up a copy of it but i've been listening to it on Bandcamp, and it fucking rules um i'll put a link to this and everything else i talk about as with all my videos down below for you to check out another one was and i have no idea how to even fake pronounce this um, Eric here with Anderschold. Um, I don't know who put it out. Um, I just find myself listening to it a lot on my phone. Um, especially when I work out. It really, it's got a lot of, like, breadth and atmosphere. And honestly, what I like about it, and something that I found myself appreciating about a lot of albums, um, more and more, especially since uh, Anepharin's struck a chord with me is a really good clean guitar tone and if you can compose compelling music and use that to contrast with your more harsh guitar work or something I really appreciate a well-placed like just amazing breath of guitar tone uh, and Avonshield does that it's it's got its moments where it's a little hokey I, I kind of don't like the drum programming on it it's a little stiff for um, my taste and if, if I could change just a, a few things about it I think it would be a fucking amazing record um, I will probably wind up picking up a copy of it I'm really not sure uh, what the deal is between CD, LP, tape, whatever um, it's just like I'm kind of reluctant to even set my foot in the game when it's all those fucking black metal kitties just clamoring over the limited pressings of whatnot. I'm just like I'll be over here eating a fucking corn dog, boys. Whatever. And then once the smoke is cleared, I just kind of sniff around and sometimes I find something cool. So, yeah. Another one was um, Jutgeit Berefrigens, which is an, uh, an artist that I follow quite a bit. Um, and he's like, I don't really. He puts out probably four or five full lengths a year, so I have no idea how to keep up with all of his releases. Um, but. Speaking of ants crawling across guitars, 
Um, he makes it sound amazing. Um, at times, it sounds like six different songs playing at the same time. Which, I don't know, everything about Udgite is like antithetical to my palate lately, but it's just impressive. It's like staring into the void for a minute and just going, oh! Okay, I've had enough. Oh! All right. It's one of those kind of things. It's fucking intense, bizarre. I love the artistic vision that he has just taken that off on a complete different path than everybody else. It's amazing. Uh, the reference with by Utekite. Another omission that I mistakenly omitted from my um, unsung best of list is uh, Don Raid's Behold Sedition Plain Song. Man, this is an impressive record. Um, I slept on it for quite a while. Um, it was just something about, I don't know, I was just, it, it's a modern metal band and I thought, eh, it's probably not for me. Um, I stand behind their anti-fascist, anti-capitalist message, um, but I didn't feel like the music would uh, line up for it with me. But upon checking it out after the recommendation of a good friend of mine, who you see pictured behind me in every video, um, it fucking rules. It destroyed me. Um, it sounds... Like, at first I couldn't put my finger on what was so different about it, what sounded so different about it, and it was... I think what I put my finger on it finally was that... For, of course, the music is wonderful. The music sounds vibrant and digestible, but it sounds so fucking passionate, and there just seems to be so much clarity between the art and the artist um, and it's something that I haven't really experienced in black metal in a long time there's so much performative metaphor between the art and the artist and this just seems so absolute to just have so much clarity uh, in its message and in its performance and I just think it's a super important conversation that we need to be reckoning with this time uh, but as our record as a musical record behind that message it is amazing it's got these like kind of irish sounding sort of violins uh with just super brutal drumming the vocals on it are just absolutely just mighty uh i highly recommend it so check out dawn raid behold seditions playing song um so that's what i have now i know when i finish editing this video together there's going to be five things that i forgot um, to put on here and that's another reason I'm kind of reluctant to like do your endless videos anymore but let's be honest I wasn't gonna fucking do anything else today so whatever um, a couple of things that I picked up this year that I that came out last year um, that have ruled I just got this in uh, this is Knuckle Clang with Yaiba Graver this came out I believe on Terrator Possessions last year um and this band fucking rules they're out of norway um they play a really slow dirgy kind of atmospheric black metal um it's important to note i guess that the band name knuckle clang or knuckle clang is apparently a norwegian word for the sound that bones make when they knock together for some reason, it paints this perfect image of what it does sound like as a black metal band. It cut, it does kind of sound distinctly Norwegian. Um, it kind of has a sonic quality that reminds me a little bit of early Over, but it's more modern. It's super atmospheric. Uh, I just can't think of a lot of like nail on the head kind of comparisons to make, but it's awesome. Um, talk about just a immersive atmosphere and I think I don't know not much to look at here but this it's so so good guys also picked up uh, Necro Vortex from Utra 2 I know I've talked about it a couple of times on the channel but this was the first thing I played to ring in the new year it still hits so hard in fact I think I played it three times in a row when I first put it on it just it's got 
everything. I fucking love this. Like, I think the first thing I like about it mostly is how like sonically pleasing it is. It's just got grating HM2 guitars. I'm not sure if they actually are, but it sounds kind of like that. Huge booming drums, and the vocalist is one of the most remarkably talented death metal vocalists going today. Um, but to call it straight death metal is kind of wrong. It kind of has its foot in a lot of left hand path era in tune kind of stuff, but it also kind of has some like snot nosy kind of crust punk sort of styles to it. But then it is maybe 75% death metal from there. Um, they're kind of unique. They're just unique enough that I love them to death, <clears throat> but they're also um, checking off a lot of things that I really, really, really love about old school death metal as well. Can't say enough good things about these guys. Um, I picked up also their album before this, this year, uh, Repercussion. Fucking rules. Check out Ultra Tomb. If you're at all inclined to like any good death metal uh, and you're not a sucker. Lastly, um, this is a atmospheric black metal project, Cantique Le Peu, and the album is called uh, Paysage Polaire, I believe. You know what this looks like. It's got snow and trees. Or you know what this sounds like. It's got snow and trees all over it. Um, but it's really well made. It's really well done. I really like it. It remains um, palatable, memorable, catchy, and it has those moments that don't happen very often anymore where you're listening to it on headphones and you're kind of focused on something and you just kind of realize like, oh my gosh, the hair on the back of my neck is standing up. This part is so stirring. Why am I frozen stiff and loving this music so much? I'm acting like Blaine Smith. I just realized I need to chill out. This fucking rules. Check it out. So, another one that I forgot to talk about um, and didn't come in until late last year, um, not to ape Marvel Mills' video too hard, but uh, Paths and Lands Thought Lost. Amazing record. Atmospheric black metal. Uh, it's very pagan sounding. Um, memorable riffs. Uh, it's just super good. Super solid stuff. Um, Paths has a few really good records under his belt, uh, but this one is particularly of note because my boy Austin Lund plays drums on it, and he really makes it um, a much more enjoyable experience. Red Vinyl. This came out on vinyl only on Bind Rune Recordings, and it is very well worth your time and your money. Um, it's amazing. It's kind of criminal that it didn't show up on a lot more uh, your end lists. And also of note, look at that beautiful artwork. Good stuff. Paths in lands thought lost. Australia. Oh, year end list in no particular order. Because um, I don't have the time to bother doing that. Um, and it doesn't fucking matter anyways. So most of the stuff, like I said, is on everybody else's year end list, so whatever. Um, I hope none of these are curveballs or unexpecteds or whatever. Um, let's start off with Musmahu, Reign of the Odious. Super guttural death metal revivalism from uh, the fella from a million bands that no one can keep up, keep up with except for everybody but me. Um, Sparta Dao. Lose. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, it's guttural. It's just super well produced. It just kind of feels like one of those records, like once you have the sound lined up and you've got all your tones and your levels made, it doesn't really matter what you fucking do. Riffs, eh, just, just, just chug. Just make some morbid angel riffs. Eh. Um, but it's great. Um, also, Magic Circle, Departed Souls. I don't listen to stuff like this. This is traditional heavy metal out of New England, but I am inclined to say that this is the best clean male, like clean vocalist in heavy metal since Ozzy fucking Osbourne. I love this singer's vocals. 
Um, and it just kind of feels like if all you're getting out of this album is the dude's enjoyable singing, it's still a fucking amazing record. It's got the music to make it such an enjoyable experience. Well written songs. I love these guys. Magic Circle. Didn't expect to love this as much as I wound up loving it because Corn Dog, their last album, this is the last second time in this video I've talked about Corn Dogs. Bellinos, Argo, their last album, Corn Dog, was kind of a stinker. But uh, Argo is a return to form, possibly the best Bellinos record. I kind of can't believe I'm saying that, but I definitely need to spend some more time listening to it to make a decision. But every time I've listened to this this year and it came out pretty recently so and it took fucking Amazon like two months to send it to me um, but fucking godly masterpiece of just mighty pagan metal um, it would do it a disservice to call this black metal because it really isn't um, it isn't obscure or nasty or raw the tones on it are amazing. The drum production on it, and all Bellinos records is just fucking flawless. This is a solo project, and it is amazing to hear what that guy can pull out. Next, we've got False's Portent. Thank fucking hell for this record. Thank hell for these kids putting out great, inspired, tragic, meaningful unforgettable black metal in this day and age. Um, had to have an album with this painter on the uh, year-end list. Um, but yeah, it's super driven, inspired, and just meaningful. Um, it's stirring. It like it's, it's pretty noteworthy when you listen to like black metal a lot of the time. When you spend like 75% of your time listening to fucking intense metal and like I do. And this makes you sit up in your fucking chair. It's got just so much more power and drive to it. These guys, I don't know how they're ever gonna top something like this, but this is just jaw-dropping, amazing artwork. I have not spent as much time with this as I would have liked to, but Merg with Stravon. Yeah, great, great band. I had to include these guys. It's in the car. Um, Cause they make a wonderful, metal um they're a scandinavian black metal band i always kind of say that because i think they're from sweden but it sounds norwegian to me um but wonderful songwriting just riffy amazing stuff from a two-piece good good stuff um this one i guess like you could kind of call this maybe a underappreciated more than a best of but a little bit of both but this is arch the your lipsons their new beautiful, beautiful album uh, on Van Records. Um, I would try to pronounce this if I could fucking read it. It's so small, but uh, you're gonna have to rely on me for the link down below. But this is the new one from Arshvadir Lipsins, which is one of the most underappreciated Viking metal bands uh, out of Iceland. They just, they put so much illustrious instrumentation and ideas and experimentation in to their music. It's just so convincing and it has so much more depth and atmosphere and variety to it than so many other bands who have tried this in the past. And I don't know why they aren't just heralded as total fucking gods. Also appreciate about them that they are telling stories of real histories, past uh, real is real relative there. Um, this is all in Icelandic, so uh, yeah, I read all of that. But uh, they go in with footnotes and pictures from the stories that the songs are about. So if you want to just dive into a historical experience by way of some amazing Icelandic black metal, um, this is where it's at. If you want a record that just gives more than you're expecting, that's a Good place to start. Um, this was on some year-end lists, but I felt like it should have been higher and more prevalent on year-end lists because this fucking thing, every time, like, I have to be careful when I put this in, especially in the car, because I will wind up driving off the fucking cliff, just thrashing my fucking head and banging my fist into the steering wheel. But Achaetis with, uh, by Funereal Presence, fucking rules. It's 
it has its feet both in modernity and old school kind of metal. It has this great experimental kind of riffing style to it. Um, it just has this like building and building tension uh, and then just squares off at the end of these little parts with these squirrely kind of like nasty riffs that just make you go, ah, 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 I need to change my pants. It's so fucking good. Funereal Presence, Akaitis. Um, complete 180 from there. I know I talked about this in a few videos where I said this was my favorite album of the year and uh, it's been knocked down a couple of times. Here's the thing about this year. If you have something that you felt like wasn't on someone else's year-end list, or if you're in a band and your album didn't make it to a year-end list, tough fucking toenails, because this year had a ton of amazing releases. Like, there are 10 albums which are fucking amazing and deserve that top spot in so many year-end lists that to ask yours to be put above you know, something or other is kind of ridiculous. So this was a year-end list, I think, where we saw that so many year-end lists were kind of the same, um, which is why I felt like it wasn't really worth doing a year-end list, but I'm ornery and I'm an asshole, so I'm doing one. Anyways, uh, Paul Say's Nocturne did not appear on anyone's year-end list. Uh, Grand Guignol Orchestra, this was released by uh, Ladlo or Le Actors de l'Ombre Productions. And yeah, as you can tell, this is uh, big top black metal. So if you've got a problem with the way Jimmy Borger adds orchestration into their black metal, stay the fuck away from this record. Not that it sounds anything like that, but if you're not cool with the way they add like a symphonic kind of thing, that's so 20 years ago, the new wave is circus clown black metal. It's the thing of the future. Get with the times, boys. This is fucking great. I'm just... I didn't need clowns to come into my black metal, but it's kind of inevitable um, at this point. But I am so enthralled by the way that they are able to play this kind of big top kind of vaudevillian theatrical kind of music. I don't know if I want to call it like jazzy or whatnot, but it just melds together and buttresses itself in with tremendous stirring black metal so fucking well. It's so weird how well it works when you hear it just gradient from being this like squeeze boxy kind of bombastic clown music and you're picturing all this like um, circusy kind of clowns going on, and then it just breaks into this fucking black metal. It just—it's so weird what it does to your brain when it makes sense, and you're like, "Oh, it's working! It's working!" Ah! Yeah. Um, these next. Okay. Tell you what, we'll get this one out of the way. Also, um, criminally absent from so many year-end lists. Chevalier with Destiny Calls. I'm saying Chevalier that way because there was a movie a couple of years ago, I can't think of what it was called right now off the top of my head, but the dude from Napoleon Dynamite was in it, and uh, it was amazing. It was about the guys from, um, um, anyway, it was about a, a fantasy author um, writing these books, and his name was Chevalier. Uh, anyways, this is a Finnish traditional speed metal band. Uh, this is just so convincing and this just has so much personality to it. In a genre that I find kind of tired, this revivalist or traditional heavy metal kind of stuff where I just feel like all the elements and all the parts and all the ingredients that you need to make a metal record, a heavy metal record, are there for you and you don't have to do anything new um, to make an acceptable, pleasing heavy metal record. This band is kind of shoving all that to the side and taking it their own way, putting their own personality onto it, and it's readily apparent that they're psyched and, and just super hyped to be playing their own kind of style, and they perform it with so much convincing ferocity. It's so fun to hear a band play something that's so much better than 
all the other traditional stuff out there. Uh, Destiny Calls by Chevalier. It's so, so good. Please check this out, especially you guys. Eric Bauer, Pat Wilding, get on this. It's super good. You're not going to regret it. All right, these next three for... Um, you have any guesses? I'm just going to go ahead and say these are my top four. Uh, in no order. You know what my number one is because I stated it back in October or so. And I'm not going back on that. But uh, I'm going to randomly shuffle them up and review them in whatever order they come out in. All right, this one. Um, this is um, an awesome record. It sound, sounds like um, immolation and uh, it's really, really good. And all you guys have heard this, I'm sure. But seriously, my personal take on this is I was not expecting this to be so fucking amazing. Um, these guys killed it. End of story. By the way, I'm so sick of hearing people say, you killed it. Anyways, um, Jimmy, you were right. This one, Yorokaska by Nazheim. Incredible, atmospheric black metal out of Sweden. Um, I think what sets this apart, Northern Silence put this out. Whoa. Did you hear that? That fucking Zomfear? Is that the. Blah, 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 blah. Anyways, what sets this apart from so much other stuff is how just mournful and sad it sounds. It sounds like walking through just a forest on just a melty, dreary, gray day. Um, and just being stirred with sadness and hope and just emotion. It's so realistic the way it's portrayed. Um, I really, really, really loved his last album, uh, Sullen's Demo, but this steps it up another notch. Uh, it's just a beautiful, beautiful, amazing record. <coughs> if it does you any good, I guess you could say it kind of sounds like Falls of Raros' Believe in No Coming Shore. Slowed down a lot. Um, and just making this sad, dreary, beautiful record. So good. Um, next, we've got Hallucinogen by Francis Blute Aus Nord. Had to pick an album with mushrooms on it. If you follow me on social media, I am also an avid mushroom loser. Um, wait, finder and then loser. Um, yeah, this is amazing. I... And I don't follow every single release by these guys, and frankly, I have a hard time keeping up with them. And I really wasn't planning on uh, checking this out, but I'm really thankful that I did. It's amazing. This might be the best Blue Dows Nord record that I have heard, and I fucking love Mort. Um, and this has some of those elements of Mort, um, but also it reminds me a lot of the Saturnian poetry, too. Uh, I can never remember what it's called, but the good one from 16 or whatever. Um, but yeah, it's great. Hallucinogen. Number one. Number one. Sequiae. Palms of Sorrowed Kings. I spent a lot of time watching a lot of shitty reviews of this record by people who just don't get it. But it's fine. If you enjoy it, just bask in the amazing, immense, decadent, reverent, fun, and just like, this is high fucking art right here. Palms of Sorrow Kings by Osequii. If, like, what else do you need for me to tell you to check this out? Let me know in the comments, and I will uh, fix your problem. So, that is it. Uh, we did it. Your end list. Hope you liked it. Thanks for uh, subscribing. Let's have fun next year. Um, we'll stay alive out there. Call your senators. They're assholes. Um, see you next time.